um, be responsible for managing the, the table rocks here that I know everybody's so um, interested in. I'm glad that everybody um, was able to be kind this evening to come out and, uh, and visit with us. Uh, we wanted to do some initial um, individual one-on-one uh, -on -one and have a good conversation, provide some information for folks, and then um, really open it up for um, any questions you might have, um, be able to um, you know, take that down as part of our public uh, process, because we do have to go through a public process for any um, changes in our boundaries where we might have new designations for um, proposed uh, special areas. And so when we do that, we take that very seriously, and um, we need to get your feedback knowing that your neighbors out there, you do have some concerns about how that area might be managed, how it might affect your um, private property, your private property rights, and uh, do want to take a minute to um, you know, open it up for any questions you may have and, and be happy to have a panel to get candid uh, Q&A here for the next few minutes. And I think we've got a couple of flip charts and, and if there are things that we need to, to capture there, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. So um, so with that, after you've heard uh, some of the uh, information that you've received from folks, um, I'll just go ahead and open it up to questions that uh, anybody might have. With that. Well, why don't you yes. continue on and how will it affect private property? We're, we're getting stories of various people before joining the movement, and we've included us with the administration. But yet, we're a private neighborhood that was established in the 1960s, after the water rights came in 1943, and we don't need to be living with them. Okay, so from, from our perspective, when, when we establish this special management area boundary, which we call an area of critical environmental concern, it's because of the unique values that it has and it requires us to do special management only on the BLM administered lands within that area. It only applies to BLM administered lands. Um, it can't apply um, to private lands in any way, shape, or form. There is no mechanism for that to occur. The one thing, the one benefit it does provide us in having that boundary is if there's an opportunity, as there has been over the years, if um, private lands are on the market available for willing sellers and it is in the best uh, interest of the, of, the, of the public for us to pursue acquisition of those lands, whether it's for you know, recreational uses or, um, or other aspects, then we can apply for certain funds that um, allow us to be able to pursue that. And again, we have to go through a public process to be able to, be able to even consider doing it. So that's, that's the real interest behind it. And we know, you know, in, in terms of the Rogue Valley, how special these areas are. And we feel like um, it is a, is a good neighbor, is a, is, a, is a good community partner, that more public access to, to places um, is good in, in that table rocks area. has been. I have a couple questions. Yes. Uh, listening to your staff, which I appreciate, uh, and I'm a fisherman, I'm down that river, most of it is in that area you're talking about, and I probably run it 40 to 50 times a year with my drift boat. And what I heard was that don't worry about the river, Jim, this is what I think, because we're not going to try and attempt to change it. Uh, it's multi-use, and it's not scenic, and so it was my understanding that there's not going to be a attempt by the to try and change the criteria for managing that river. Is that? Accurate? That's absolutely correct. Okay, got it. That's absolutely correct. Uh, another question I have is based on Liz and I having a small ranch in eastern Oregon. On the, it's on the watershed of the Steens Mountain. And in 2000, I had the opportunity to work with uh, environmental groups, uh, BLM, and uh, the landowners. And so they worked out what they thought at that time it was a pretty good document and they signed off, Congress adopted it, and even in today's society, now that was in October of 2000, the, you know what I'm going to say, there's lawsuit after lawsuit leaning uh, about that piece of property there that people had worked with. And so when I look at that boundary, I want to make sure there isn't any question that it's not going to put at risk. That's the question. The landowners, there are going to be for lawsuits by environmental groups because you're not doing your job in their eyes. Uh, you're not 
doing the implication of the law and not following the implications of the law, and uh, land, landowners would feel like they were blindsided. So I want, I want, you have the capacity to tell us today that you guys don't have to worry even though you're within that boundary. So within that boundary, any, any lawsuits that would um, come about um, related to, to, to management of only the BLM lands, that's where the conservation groups would have the opportunity to. There's, there's no other opportunity that they would um, have um, that they don't have currently um, related to private uh, lands that, that I'm aware of. So that's, that's, that's what I can tell you. Any lawsuits would only apply to the BLM land, and that's, that's where it has been. Even though it says that's a management in the, in, in the legend right. of that, it says it's a management. Because the, the actual designation only applies to the BLM land. It can't apply to any private lands at all. So the boundary is an administrative boundary. It helps us focus our priorities again for um, the possibility for potential land acquisition for willing sellers. That's, that's really the, the main reason where it, why it is on the map where it is. Thank Otherwise you. it cannot provide any management direction for us now. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Yes sir. How I'm trying to keep in what you just said. How is the private landowner definition held throughout the course of the project? Does the conservancy own lands? Are they a partner and thus not privately owned lands? Have they donated the lands? Is it now totally titled to the U.S. government? A um, couple of questions there as far as you can go over that. You bet. So the, the, the existing Nature Conservancy lands, those are private lands. I mean, they're, they're, and they're managed by that organization. And they have chosen to partner with us um, so that we provide cooperative management because you know, we have a trail system out there. We do the same things for you know, habitat management, fuels reduction type work. Um, and so those things benefit both us and their organization. Um, secondly, when they when they went ahead and acquired other uh, private lands and, and they were held in trust as Nature Conservancy lands, then they did ask us, were we interested in, in purchasing those those lands from them? And we, we said we were. So then at that point, um, the, the types of, of access and uses um, became, you know, once they were moved from TNC private ownership to, to public ownership, then that provided the full suite of uh, public opportunities that wouldn't um, be allowed under the, the Nature Conservancy's um, management. And as far as donations, um, we do have a parcel that they are um, planning to donate. We're, we're working with them on that. And again, once um, those lands are donated to, to BLM, those would be public lands that are available for you know, multiple uses rather than um, what would be taken for limited under other organizational uses from the TNC. As a partner, how much input do they have in the total project for the end use? For the end use on, on BLM? I mean, ultimately, um, you know, we, we work with them because they're a partner. I mean, we, we, we found them to be a great, a great partner and that we have many of the, the same interests. There are places at times where we've had to agree to disagree on, on things. Um, and, you know, they've given us that input just like uh, any, any member of the public has. Yes, sir. Um, I think there's a big disconnect here because every action that you take or your organization takes, um, you do it with taxpayer dollars. And um, therefore, if you're doing it with taxpayer dollars, you should represent all of the taxpayers' concerns. Now, going around talking to your biologists and your botanists and everything, uh, you were making a concentrated effort to. Uh, protect environmentally sensitive areas and, uh, and, and uh, creatures and plant life, which m most people in this room would never have heard of, would never even have thought of. I mean, I personally, I don't care about a prairie shrimp. And, uh, you know, and uh, uh, how do you justify taking these actions with taxpayer money when most of the taxpayers couldn't care less about it? I mean, they couldn't care less if a prairie strip dies. I don't think I'm going to cry about it. <laughs> I mean, are you going to cry about it? Be honest with me. It happens. It'll happen every year. And uh, and so, you know, these, these, the lands, these, the public lands that we manage, 
Um, we're going to continue to manage the, the lands that, that we're entrusted with the same way we always have. Um, and so any, any new acquisition, those would be new public lands, and we'd have to go through uh, the process of you know, determining what the best um, and most appropriate you know, public uses are out there, just like uh, any other land. So um, it's not going to cost us any more. We've um, looked at you know, what our existing uh, budget implications could be, and it would be for, um, you know, again, any, any potential uh, uh, cost associated with the actual acquisition itself. So we try to do a lot of things with volunteers, with partners, um, folks who are interested in, in working with us. We do have um, we do have strong partnerships with the tribes because um, you know as a, as a as federally recognized tribes we have um, a government to government relationship with them, and so those are other ways that we that we do work with. You know, Maybe you have the wrong partners. Maybe you ought to have a partner with a regular guy who's you know working out here who uh, cares about uh, lands being closed off, maybe depriving them of a living. Maybe a guy like that ought to be one of your partners. And so we do have good, strong partnerships with Oregon Hunters Association and, and other groups. I mean, we're not excluding any anyone who would want to, you know, work with us on this. That's why we have these types of opportunities for, for public forums, and, and you know, we do want to have, um, you know, a lot of these partnerships. So, uh, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah, John. I uh, probably most people in the room <coughs> do care about the natural environment, uh, particularly in this area. And uh, would definitely, I think, probably more than 90% here would be uh, uh, in favor of espousing the same things that you're espousing relative to public access to those lands and uh, treating them in a you know, sensitive manner, the lands that the public owns. And uh, uh, I think probably about 90% of the people in here would also express some concern about the government being involved. I hope you can understand that there are those kinds of concerns on people's minds. That's right, and that's why we want to make sure and have, I mean, it is about transparency, it's about being clear, it's about building trust, and you know, certainly our county commissioners in the county, uh, Jackson County has been, been well involved, and I'm glad that you are taking, everybody in this room is taking an interest as well, because that's important, so it does maintain a, a good, sense of public-private um, trust and ownership in the, whole, in the whole path that we're trying to go to. Sir. Have you yet or are you scheduled for specific meetings with Jackson County people about coordination? Um, we are, in fact, uh, I believe next Tuesday we'll be meeting with the Jackson County Commissioners. Um, over the last several years we've had a number of, of meetings with um, the various commissioners um, and, and, and different commissioners boards over, over the years as well. So. Um, we, we, we take um, our relationship with the county very seriously because it is a, a unique relationship that we do have and, uh, and that coordination role is, is very important and you know, without, their, without their support, um, you know, we feel like um, we, we don't have um, you know, a, a project that, that is you know, broadly supported by the public. So. so you'll be at the work session on Tuesday? On Tuesday, that's correct. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned a unique relationship with Jackson County. Can you expand on that? And also, uh, you mentioned that the cost would not increase. You say it's going to be an across-the-board uh, increase for the federal government. But um, can you talk about the cost to the county in terms of the loss of private tax or the property tax uh, when we're in a situation where public safety it needs to be funded? And we're losing those revenues based on this land acquisition. Right. So, so um, a couple points there on the uh, on the on un unique relationship with Jackson County because um, the, the BLM in Western Oregon because we um, have the checkerboard ownership pattern that we do have and we're in Oregon and California grant lands county. You know the, the timber sale receipts that that we generated um, from our projects they were um, you know some of those did go to counties to pay for what otherwise would have been deferred uh, in lieu of taxes. Okay. So, so we have a unique relationship in, in that regard, and we've always maintained that um, as an important one. Um, in terms of the, the taxes, uh, and I'll just use the example of the recently acquired lands that we had from the Nature Conservancy, because those changed would have, you know, really from what would have been uh, exclusive farm use to a different um, zoning designation. Um, we felt like it was important to go ahead and compensate the county for that change in the zoning effectively changed. So we did 
it was in the neighborhood of about $185,000, I think, to pay that portion to have it um, be whole with the county. When we would do the same thing with other acquired lands. So there was an increased cost that you saw to pay for that then? That was as part of the total land acquisition package that when we, when we went in and um, uh, applied for the grant proposal, we made sure that that was in there. And again, the Land and Water Conservation Fund, those funds come from offshore oil and gas receipts. It's a, it's a, it's a set amount that every year that we have to compete uh, for, and, um, and, and depending on what is in the President's budget and what that level is set at, um, that's, that's the really pool of money that everybody nationally applies for. So it's not new money, it's what's been you know, authorized on, a, on an annual basis for the last, I can't remember how many, it's been at least 25, 30 years. Well, do you see the county making up for the lost revenue based on this land acquisition? So I, I guess I'm not seeing it as lost revenue, and we'll still pay, continue to pay with that, that acreage increase, we'll then um, go into the payment of taxes formula, which then we would continue to have to, you know, we would, we would have a payment of taxes increase that would also go with those are drying up too. But they have over the years. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. I got one more. Uh, total area. I was going over with some of the folks that you have there. What we see now is you manage, I think, 1,240 acres. And by the end of this project, it, what we came up with was a figure of over 11,000 acres. What is the strategic goal long term to turn that 11,000 acres into? So right now, um, the acreage is, is the existing BLM administered acreage within that boundary. And um, so there is no, there is no new increase. And, and the only priority we've um, placed on any future acquisition right now has been on what was you know, formerly known as the, as the Neary um, property, because that was a, of interest at one point in time, but we do not have a long range strategic plan for acquisition in that area. It's more. Well, that's not what I'm talking okay. about, about acquisition, because the whole goal is acquisition to become what I see here is an ACEC. No. Uh, what is that? Well, then why is it bordered at that point? So, again, it's, it's the border is established um, on, on well marked on the ground locations. So, what one benefit of that is it reduces the, 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 the cost of monumenting through surveys and that sort of thing. They're, they're easily established, well understood um, management boundaries for convenience more than anything. Um, and it also provides an area that is, um, you know, knowing that there have been properties that, are, that are, have been on the market and there has been an interest over the years, that it gave us some flexibility in seeing where we had, you know, places that may or may not be in the public interest. That's really what it comes down to. John, who are the stakeholders uh, involved in this? So um, in, in the development of the cooperative management plan, it was um, the Nature Conservancy. Um, it's been the Confederate Tribes of Grand Ronde and the, and the Cow Creek Tribe. Um, we've also had uh, Jackson County um, has, you know, has been at the table as a partner. Um, but, you know, the interest that the, that the county has primarily had is, is again, what, what types of multiple recreational uses are going to be available and, and seeing, you know, what advice they can provide from that standpoint. Um, you know, Parks and Recreation is going to be a good partner as well. Okay, one quick follow-up question. On the back of your handout tonight, you've got, uh, under the definitions here, a couple of things, ONA, Outstanding Natural Area. And you have in here an area of high scenic values has been little altered by human impact. When I'm looking and comparing that definition with ACEC, the area of critical environmental concern, and looking at the goals that you've talked about and your colleague uh, who wrote the letter and talked about, what would it take to put in that definition that the ACEC designation could not be applied to any land that had been developed or inhabited. And that would apply not only to your agency, but also to any of your stakeholders, partners at that, to change that designation. In other words, I want the definition changed. <laughs> um, 
Jane, to, to mimic or to mirror what you have here of outstanding natural area, i.e. little altered by human impact, I assume that would apply to houses and uh, you know, things of that nature, that kind of property. Uh, as opposed to say wall land uh, that you mentioned before, the, the once upon a time resort proposed land that's just basically vacant land or something that adjoins your land that maybe you would want to acquire to make a, a continuance of that. But if you've got this definition here for outstanding natural area, why not have that for the area of critical environmental concern to reflect the same criteria? Because I think that would alle alleviate or some step to alleviate a lot of anxiety I have and maybe other property owners have. That down the road in the future, these definitions aren't going to suddenly be applied to by maybe not even you, but one of your stakeholders. And here we go with the sue and settle business. So these definitions, Bob, that we've, that we've got in front of us right now have been um, part of our BLM planning, our, our planning manuals since the mid-1980s. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think the, the main importance um, is where these um, will, will apply and, and where they will only apply. And again, that's only on BLM and Minister lands. It can't be, they can't be applied anywhere else. They can't be applied within, and generally speaking, they can't be applied anywhere in that, that general boundary area. It's only the specific um, federally administered ownership. So again, you'd have to have an act of Congress or something to change the definition? It, it, it would require us to go through our Washington office um, and we would have to have the manual change that we've been living with um, nationwide in BLM since the mid-1980s. So yeah. not an act of Congress, but it's certainly been an agency standard for many decades. Maps, all, all everything we're talking about says ACEC critical environmental concern, and I, I am concerned too about that definition. I'm wondering if we ought to be calling this something else because so much of that land inside of this area is not ever going to be in BLM ownership. That's right, and it seems like it ought to be called something else so that uh, that would put a lot of fears to rest. I think. So, Michelle, could you put that on the flip chart for us to follow up on? Thanks, Joe. John, yeah. uh, it was a bit of a surprise when I received that letter September 4th or thereabouts uh, that we were within this boundary that Joe just talked about. There must be a way that a landowner has just been notified that they were within something. That there'd be two or three steps so we would not be within that. What is the process that you have in place where a landowner could petition to be outside of that balance. So right now is the time for that, and I think um, letting us know that in the comments that's going to help us. Right now is the time. And it's not a petition, it's, it's, your, it's your input, it's not as formal as a petition. So I was getting, you can make it as formal as you want, but I think I take this feedback very seriously because it's not without your guys' support, it really <coughs> makes it uh, you know, really not a very violent problem. Yes, sir. Uh, in your news uh, March 26, 2014, uh, one of the last paragraphs to talk about uh, Table Rocks was one of the 101 projects nationwide program and one of only two in the state of Oregon that are part of the President Obama's Great American Outdoors program. In light of Obama, uh, with a stroke of a pen, took 360,000 square acres down the San Gabriel Mountains into a national monument, who's to say that this won't happen here? Um, there, there is nothing that says that couldn't happen anywhere if it was a priority. But I know that nationally this is not a priority for that kind of designation. Why wouldn't the uh, Nature Conservancy push that for Obama? Um, they, they haven't, and, they, and I have not heard that there's any intention for them to do it. But right now we're meeting our objectives out there. There, there are other places where um, you know, folks do want that kind of designation, and that's typically where it will they'll focus any, any cooperative efforts. But this is not a place where that's an emphasis, or do I see it as an emphasis in the yeah. future? And under, under Clinton, we lost uh, the Cascade Siskiyou pilot cock area out there, Howard Prairie and Green Springs and all that was taken away from us. 
and already the federal government takes over 60 percent of the state already why do we need to give any more to the feds um, and, and I don't think that this we're not proposing that, that that would happen here or that we're advocating anything along those lines and um, you know any administration can exercise that executive authority at any time so I you know I, I have a hard time answering your question because I think that's some that's the world we do live in and there is that possibility but I don't see it as being anything that uh, I would anticipate um, happening here. Yes. So how many acres will it put under BLM management with the land donated by the Nature Conservancy in this project? In total? Um, so once that's completed, even without this boundary, uh, new boundary designation, um, we're looking at, and Rick or somebody help me out on the exact numbers. Um, the, the donation itself? Yeah, the donation itself, but in total, um, under BLM, the, 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 the donation is 220 additional acres. That would come from BLM. 220. And that's in the works. I mean, regardless of where things go with this uh, new boundary, that, that is a realty action that we're continuing to work on. Just a question on yes. that regard. Um, I just seen that figure. Um, is that the current donation on it? And is there additional donations to come? That's, that's the current donation that we're working on. And I'm not aware of. Um, the Nature Conservancy approaching us to donate any additional land. So at this time, that appears to be uh, the additional amount we have. Right. So you're, talking, you're saying 200 and how many? 220 additional land. So there might be some confusion here right now. This, so this part and this part of the yellow, um, we just purchased, we purchased from the Nature Conservancy. So this is already part of, so this is, and this portion, just this portion right here, Nature Conservancy is donating to the BLM, and that's it. That's so really anything, this yellow, this yellow, and soon to be, this will be only BLM administered lands, and that's it. And then we have lands down here, and we have lands here, 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 and here. So the, the red border around the yellow is BLM administered lands at this time before those additions? Right, these are right, and these were the ones that have been in since 1986. 1986. So in 1986, these were designated, this parcel, this parcel, and this parcel were designated ACEC. Since then, we, we uh, bought this piece of property um, and this and this and so now because of our planning regs we have to do a plan amendment to add to add these lands into the ACEC designation so that's really this is the only piece that's being donated right now right now BLM already has and administers these federal lands so what we would be actually looking at is the, on the left side the small where it says rock that rectangle extended up, basically up into the Correct. Upper corner. Correct. And then that would be BLM. totally a red BLM. Yes. Now the green is the all nature it, conservancy. That's all nature conservancy. Correct. And then in the new section that you purchased from them, here and here, up there, that would then be extended around that entire yellow block I see right there. Correct. And that would be ACEC. This no. is that pillbox area, you know, where the. And then how many how many acres is it? In the so area? we just purchased, and it was 800, 800 something. 817 something like acres. So that's where we got. So and Nature Conservancy purchased that from Mr. Woods when when he was alive, or just after his death when he had the Rogue River Ranch. So we just purchased 815 17 acres, and those are going to be what we're doing with this plan is designating these lands as ACEC, this land is ACEC, and this has already been designated ACEC. And then anything else that is available for us, we would designate it ACEC, and that's what we're going to say in the plan. And this little part right here, which is across from the upper table rocks, there's a little part that, of the BLM land that goes across the road, we're saying, that's not ACEC because it doesn't meet the criteria of the resource values that we like, not like, that we, as part of an AC designation. 
So we're, un we're saying that this little part over here, and it's hard to see on the map, is 0.9 acres. We are not, um, that won't be called ACEC. And it's right now it's a gravel driveway. It's like parking overflow lot. of parking for the trailhead. It's just a gravel area. So we would drop that from the current ACEC when was, what year was the original ACEC designation brought on? 1984, 84, 86. 86. 86. Thanks. 86. Thanks, Marshall. Has that definition changed since that time? It is yeah. not. The ferry shrimp have gotten really big. <laughs> they ran me right off of the five acre piece right over here. Here, gentlemen, ask a question here. Go ahead. This land now becomes part of the ACEC. Is this stuff being taken off the Jackson County tax rolls? So that's that's where we um, compensated Jackson County for the change in, um, in zoning definition. So that um, will now fall under the, the what we call payment in lieu of taxes schedule, which all federal lands um, uh, have to adhere to. Is that more or less what they're currently paying? So we made that land. So we made the county um, whole for that change in, in, in zoning, um, which was a requirement. And it's, it's, so I don't know specifically the answer to your question, whether that, that payment lieu of taxes payment is, is more or less, but with the combination of the two, but I, I, I believe it's gonna be less. Okay, so it means the rest of the county has to pick up uh, that lack of funding um, because of the less payment off that they I'm going into the ACEC. And again, just to be clear, that one time um, payment with, that we did make, make yeah. for the county to change it uh, in, in zoning, that was to make the county whole for that change. And so we, we believe we have um, met our tax obligations that it would have been for that one year, but in the future, then there's, there'll be nothing, right? That's for, the, that's for that, that period in time, but it does include a prorated rate, um, from what I understand, out um, beyond the single year. It's, it's a multi year. Um, so, a decreasing uh, tax payment? It'll be under the payment lieu of taxes schedule, which will be the per acre rate that's established by Congress in any given year. And that does, cha that does has changed over time. I, I just have a follow up question. Jean explained you know, how the land ownership was on that. But I don't understand why the big red um, border, what is, why is that? What does that represent? So, so again, what that represents is an area that helps us prioritize. We, we do not look at land acquisition equally across our, our entire district, okay? And so where we believe we have values that are beneficial to um, the public for, for access, for recreational purposes, for um, places that, that um, ha do have those unique values, then that allows us to focus in and um, set that as a priority that if, um, Properties that are, are available from willing sellers do become available. Then we can consider those for um, the funding source that I mentioned earlier, the Land and Water Conservation Fund that we have to apply to nationally. That's what that allows us to do. But, but if we desire, we can opt out of that, is what you're saying. I heard you say that earlier. If we want to be taken out of that kill zone or that acquired zone. So, so the, the, you, you if you want the boundary change, now is the time to provide us with that input on where you think that boundary should be. I'm sorry, I didn't. I mean, I'm ready to put my um, residence in there as being taken out of that zone. Okay. A lot of us are. Okay. So I think that's, yeah, that is why you're here. I mean, I think um, having, having us know where you think the most logical boundary is to help us meet what what our overall intent has been um, and what you know to alleviate your concerns this is that opportunity for us to do that. where's the sheet where you keep track of the addresses you know it would have been nice if it stated somewhere in their letter that the BLM wasn't trying to acquire any private property but it doesn't say that yeah, we appreciate that feedback. A lot of times, you know, and I'll just I'll just apologize for that uh, insensitivity uh, right now. So I think that's uh, that's something that we can continue to learn from. So thanks for bringing that up. Nice. Yeah. Okay.
should start. Other questions or comments? So property owners that want to withdraw from the AC, EC, do they speak to you or Gene or who, who do they speak to? It, it will be um, Gene or, or Michelle. We have comment forms that are right over there as well. Um, they're, they're, it is best for you to put it in writing. I mean, but we will, if, I mean, this will also won't be the, 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 the last opportunity for that. So as we continue to move through this process, um, to pick up the phone and call what it was, it's, it's as good a way as any as well so, after the meeting. So I want to, yeah, so I just want to talk about that briefly. Uh, it's really important that you either email us, um, you can write on the comment forms, you can send us an email, and if you don't use email, that's fine. Please just send us a, re a letter. We'd like to have it in our records. Um, and tell us really what your concerns are. But the process after this is, is we get your information. And I would really like to, um, the letter that we sent you said we'd like to have comments by October 8th. Well, this is, of course, past October 8th. So we would like for your comments to be within the next week or two weeks, because we're in the process of starting our planning and developing alternatives. What you saw was a proposed. So now we're going to be developing our alternatives. And this is not the last time you get to hear from us, because what we're going to do is we're going to start working on our, we're going to take in the input you give us in writing. You may call us, and we'll do a conversation record, but it's really, uh, I would really appreciate it if you could write it. Um, then what we're going to do is the planning team with the specialists that you see here, we're going to develop alternatives and start to look at this, and we're going to take your input. And after we develop our alternatives, we're going to send our NEPA document, which is an environmental assessment that with our alternatives, we're going to send that back out to you to look you, all of you people, if you still want to, are still interested in this, we're going to send them back out to you and say, Here, here's what we've decided on, not, and we have not made a decision, we're asking for your input again. So really what we're doing is we want your input now, your concerns, and we're hearing your concerns, you don't like the red line around, but you know, what are your concerns in pertaining to that? And then if we can um, alleviate those concerns, we will be glad to do that using the words that you need to, need to see on that. And then when we send you our EA out, we're going to say, here's our EA. We're going to ask you to review it again. You'll get a 30-day review, this, and um, you can give us comments back. And then after that, we'll make, an, we'll make the decision on what, the, on, on what we're going to do in that area. So, this, so it's not as though this is your last time to talk to us. Please don't ever think that. Yes? Um, when you mentioned the alternatives, is this an internal method that you're going does it go back to Oregon Solutions when they bring in a consensus group? No, this is something that we do internally, the BLM's doing that, with input from you as the public, and input, input from our partners. So it's, it's us that's doing it. So BLM, so just this input here. from the partners, and I guess maybe what I'm referring to, how much, how much say do they get into the alternatives is there a public process so that we can get suggestions from the public that, that's into what, the alternative? That's what this is right now. So write us, give us your, give us, and we'll, and we'll see if we can, yeah, put it into the alternatives. Right. You know, I believe we have a staff that's professional and you probably did this in a thoughtful way. That boundary? Right. So it tells me that you probably have looked at three or four different boundaries. You didn't just say, uh, 234, the Grove River, and you have it. So I think you have your staff that's done it. I'd be interested because to ask me to tell you where the boundary should be, I don't have the information I think I need. So I'd be interested to get a letter out to the landowners to say, here's some of our options. What do you think? Not just tell us where the, the boundary should be. I, I don't know that I'd know. So, so it would be helpful. Now, I'm not saying you have to do it. You probably aren't going to do it. No, we will do it. And in okay. fact, we, we will do that as part of this process. We've um, provided this as the first, here's what we're thinking. Um, we'll then develop, as Gene said, um, we've got other alternatives that then we'll make public. And those will be in what she called the range of alternatives. So it, okay. can, it can be gotcha. this or something smaller. And we think you know, it would be best to hear from you if, if you know, you've, you've heard what our interests are, and if there's a way to alleviate your concerns and we can be your interests, we want to do that. And, and we don't have a 
preconceived idea what that boundary needs to be. But and I'm, your staff have, I would think, have already looked at other boundaries. There are other potential boundaries. We haven't we haven't given them as much um, in depth consideration as this one. At this, at this point, that's right. Who are your partners here? I'm sorry. I mean, I know the general talent, but what about your agency? Who are they here? So we had um, we had the Cal Creek uh, tribe, a representative from Cal Creek tribe that was here. Uh, Jason, um, he was here earlier and, and, and did participate. Um, typically, the Nature Conservancy um, is uh, involved in, in a lot of our planning, but uh, this isn't this isn't part of their um, what they consider their decision. They are fine with the boundary as it is um, because that's part of our management plan and, and it is uh, fine for their needs. So um, they didn't feel compelled to. To, to be at this meeting, and then um, our other partner, the Confederate Tribes of Grand Ronds, their up, their reservation is up out of uh, east of, or west of Salem. So what for them, what's their what's their decision? Yeah. Because of the, the, the Grand Ronds. What is their decision? Yeah. Why why do they want to be part of this? Um, this is part of what was considered their ceded lands territory. Um, it was to kill man, it's so there there are numbers of groups and bands of Indians, and so the Grand Ronds do have members. Um, of the tribes that were down in this area. Yeah, so they 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 do they encompass the water and this rogue Indians. Is it the rogue Indians over here? Right, and the rogue Indians. They killed yeah. them all the way back. They killed them all the way back. Uh, the rogue Indians is an in that group. They're Americans that we gave to the Indians that were here. So there were different bands of Indians. And when the rogue Indian wars occurred, they banded all the Indians together and they moved them onto what was a coast reservation. And then that started getting, uh, that, Started, the land mass started going more to Europeans wanting it. They never thought people would want to live on our coast, but it's so harsh. And those lands that were Indian reservation lands continue to shrink. So what we have is we have the Grand Wallon, and we have the Celeste, and we have the Cow Creek, and we also have some climate plants in the Cascades uh, National Monument area. So when you hear Grand Wallon, and you hear Celeste, and you hear Cow Creek, all those uh, tribes did have ties to this land traditionally and, and part of that treaty process. Does that make sense? I just don't see what makes it so special for um, I, don't well see how, they, I don't see how it's their land. They have um, spiritual ties, especially to the Table Rocks, that uh, through uh, their history, they have handed down generation after generation for thousands and thousands of years. So when you say it's not their lands, they were here definitely before we were. And they were removed, most definitely, and put on those reservations. So I just want to make sure when you were saying there's no Grand Ron or who's not they were the Tacoma, the Tacoma got separated into all these different the Grand Ron, the Celeste, the Conference. So we do have Tacoma members that are still. In the Grand Ron tribe? Yes, most definitely. Yes, sir. Well, according to the Chess the Nation, uh, they have claims to this area also. Well, um, the Coach as a federal government, okay, so as a federal agency, we have a responsibility, government to government, with federally recognized tribes. And um, the Shasta tribes, um, there's only a small portion that are federally recognized tribes that have ties to this land that we deal with face to face as a government to government relationship. Great, Feds are at it again. Uh, <laughs> so we have to be sensitive to everybody. Well, it's it's no different. I mean, these with these BLM administered lands. I mean, and again, with the federally recognized tribe status, we do have a requirement under under our laws to to have a government to government relationship um, in, in what we do, and that's been long standing um, for for many decades. So, yes, sir. I uh, I think the answer would really be is if you gave all this land back to the county to deal with the manage. Get out of the whole picture. No, that would be the only fair way to let the people of the county deal with it. That's my opinion. Okay, thanks for the comment. Um, anybody else have questions, comments, thoughts? Yes, sir. Yeah, listen, you guys have been playing with this thing since 19, or 2011, right? Talking about it, figuring it out, making your plan. So, so. so, so Two weeks ago, we get this letter saying that you're going to have this meeting here, and we get one shot at this thing to, to 
voice our opinion? So since 2011, what we have done is developed um, the management plan for this area that provides direction right. on how I we're, mean, we're, and we're, we're dealing with down here in two weeks and, and have everything figured out. It's taken you guys three years. So no, this is this is the opportunity and again um, to look at this boundary, and it's only the boundary itself. So this is a one-shot thing. Um, so we have we have this public process, and we know if you, you folks are interested in what we're doing, absolutely. And so we have established time frames for these requirements for our environmental assessments, um, and this is that opportunity. So, um, and I think you know, and again, based on the public feedback, we um, over the years we have extended public comment periods. We have. Um, um, given you know levels of, of interest, we've um, not just made it um, the set time frame. So um, I'd certainly be open to entertaining uh, if that's what folks are most interested in. What um, is going to be you know the best interest of the public to have, have an informed conversation about? It. Yes, ma'am. Where he's coming from is your management plan is dated March 2013, and we just got the letter just recently, so it didn't really give people. A a lot of time to commute with you uh, ahead of time so we can come more prepared with our questions uh, and, and talk with. We appreciate this meeting. Don't, don't take that wrong. But from March 2013 to October 2014, that's a long time. We could have got a letter sooner. And during that time frame when we were developing those management plans, we did um, use, use the same mailing list and notify the public we did have um, the same opportunity for this is dated March 2013. Right, and at that time, that's that's the same process we used, and we didn't get the same level of, of interest um, at that time. And, and again, it wasn't establishing um, a new boundary; it was establishing direction for the BLM administered and parked lands at that point in time. So um, we, you know, we did provide that public opportunity, but we didn't get the same level. Of Question, just kind of, kind of go around the room here. I don't want folks, there have been some folks who have been patient and been very, very quiet, and I uh, don't want to miss any opportunity. So, anyone? Yes, sir. Now, should, should we start a formal petition for everyone that wants opted out of this? I mean, I, I don't want to be in any special designation. I, I'm not special. I, I got enough county and government rules as it is not to have an extra special one on top of me. And I, I'd be for a formal petition. Any property owner that wanted opted out could be opted out. It would carry a lot of weight in the, in this process. I, it sure would. I don't see what the upside would be for any landowner that uh, would want to remain inside of it. The best you can give a person is market value for their property. That's what the law says. Right. Right. Fair market value. Right. right. Can't help but ask this. With the transfer of these properties in the law through Flipper, how how does the Nature Conservancy get the ability to sit at this table and define these alternatives? So they, they are in this process, um, like any other public entity or private entity rather, um, they um, they have not um, been involved in this process establishing this boundary. We've used this as a as a boundary of convenience in our management plan, which has no other applicability. I mean, this, this process here, I think what I'm saying is the planning process for the alternatives, which you, you know, I think you did list them as part of the stakeholder group. The right, they're one of our partner stakeholder groups that, that we do we, we do work with, um, and we will consider their uh, input as we will yours. They're, they have, they're not sitting, they have not sat at the table and have just developed the alternative. Their input will be, <coughs> we've asked them for, the, they receive the same letter you receive, we're expecting the same comments back from them that they, that they get. When, when the EA is, when we get the EA uh, finalized and we want to send it out for you for review, to look at it, they'll get the same amount of time that you will get that we did. So they're, so they're not, the, the worry is that I spent an extensive amount of time in their website and all of the associated parts that they discussed early on when I first heard about this and followed it for quite a while and got into some of their discussions and their listings and their desires and goals. And this is scary. 
and, and, and that's why you see people concerned. And I understand that because then, and that's something that we as the BLM have to balance with our partners. Yeah. Whether it's the Nature Conservancy or the tribes, we have to balance those um, out with those goals or whatever we have that do. Right. So that, and I, and I think that's important to recognize. Yeah, the Nature Conservancy has a responsibility to their organization, and we have a responsibility to the public. Right, and you'll read in the Nature Conservancy's uh, website, Preserve, and um, we're, we're talking beyond public lands, multiple use. So that's important that we recognize that, and their input is the same as yours. But the ultimate concern is, is that with the acquisitions and their ability to partner with you, and the added to say regulations and different things that are going on here. So if I look at the entire thing and you look at it now, you started off with 1,250 acres and basically you said 800 on the other piece and 200 on this other piece. So that says 2,000, but the area there is 11,000. I'm just looking at a, at a long-term plan. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. What. You know, we can recognize with, I mean, uh, not recognize, we can work with, and it'd be great if we we could have partners with um, your neighborhoods that we have out there. Those are the we can have we can have partnerships with your neighborhoods. We can have partnerships with the people that gold red estates. We can have partnerships to <laughs> if you wanted to be our partner. Listen, you're a nice lady, but I sure as hell don't want you for a partner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about what. <laughs> but we can so anyway, that's just what I'm trying to say is we, we do partner with neighborhoods is what I'm saying. So I, I just don't want you to realize that that's what we've done because the Nature Conservancy and BLM have been working together for a long time. Yeah, we've, you know, our environmental education program that we've got up here is over 25 years old and we've been working with uh, us and uh, Nature Conservancy and BLM. There's just a lot of other programs in work that the ultimate thing is, within two years, we're going to lose the President of the United States. Okay? He changes out, okay? And like you said earlier, with a stroke of a pen, I think you talked about a monument. And, you know, if we make it too easy for that to happen, that's going to happen. And that's in two years. And, and I would provide uh, maybe an alternative uh, view of that, that if um, we have an area that, that we believe um, is working for us the way it, it is, um, then there would be no reason for um, another designation that, that a community may not want. So I think that that does there there is there is you know a, a lot of power in having that. And I appreciate what you just said. And that, like I said, I've been here 20 years, and I look at this and I, it's work, it was working basically the way it was. We have a this partner went in and started acquiring lands, and then now this process started. And in their own information, they're alluding to keeping it going and making it the way that they want it. And that's not the way that you want it, it's the way that they want it. And that's where I go to the flip up. I go to the different things. If, if it becomes, you know, public property, they don't have a right to have that input. It has to be your agency decision. But now you're working with them as a partner to get around the flip up restrictions. And that's scary. And, and, and I want to be clear, we're not um, working with the Nature Conservancy to work around the FLIPMA, um, uh, the law. We have to adhere to that law. And um, because they are a neighbor and we have um, some mutual interest in terms of trails and, and, and recreational uses, that's, that's our main motivation behind having that, that partnership. That's really where it lies. Yes, sir. The Nature Conservancy that you're working with, People that you are face to face with, are they Jackson County residents or are they from out of area, uh, what I call the urban environmentalists? They, they, they are in um, they are in Rogue Valley. They're in Rogue Valley? They are. They, are, they have staff uh, here um, that have, have uh, long standing um, you know, staff that have worked in this area for a number of years. Yeah. Yes, sir, Bob. Uh, I got a question here. Is it Gene? Gene, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Let me borrow your map up here for a minute. In our, I guess you'd have to say, private conversation, my understanding of what your representation is, we've got this boundary around here so that your organization can qualify for the grant money. And you're looking at purchasing what was proposed to be this resort area that fell through. Correct. Okay. Now, 
Are there any other lands within this area you're looking to acquire? None. All right, so let's say you put this, you get the money in one thing or another, and you purchase that land. Okay, now it's yours, you got the title. Is there any other reason to maintain this area as a designation of an ACEC managed aerial area once you get the land? Um, I, can, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know the answer because if we get this land and there's something unique right here that someone wants to sell us property that would we do that, we would, you know, if that, but I don't know the answer to that. No. Okay. It's only this land that we're looking at right now because this has some, some unique well, yeah, what you're looking for as far as right. the nature angle right. from what Correct. you're after. Yes. Because obviously, I think the Cow Creek tribe has this as a ranch and a right. working ranch. So right. that, that. that's there. We've got all down here is developed and sprinkle along Tresham Road and all right. the fire station and there's all private property and ranches including up above here and below. So my point is, some gentleman, I think, over here asked about what landowner in his right mind would want to be in there. And that's, I'm glad to hear that, because that tells me my mental health is still uh, up there. So my thing is, if we can't change the definition of it, and you get your land over there, why does this have to still be encompassing all of us? That's part of the proposal. Now, I don't know if you can get away with that as saying, well, once we get it, it goes in your plan, because that may, I understand that part of it, but that's what I'm looking at here, is how, so, how permanent is what, what you and I also talked about, too, was as this, this uh, uh, boundary, you know, that we show here, um, it, what it'll do is, because of our planning process, every time and it doesn't matter, every time we receive a piece of property, so for example, this property that we received from the Nature Conservancy, we, ha we have to do this plan amendment that we're proposing to do right now. We have to do that, and that's what our RMP planning regs say. So and what we're doing is, is the plan amendment says, these lands are gonna be added to the ACEC for Table Rocks. These lands are gonna be added to these three parcels that we have, so we have to do that. So what we were trying to do is try to, to um, make this fluid, and as we're saying, so as we, if, if we acquire lands from willing sellers or donated parcels, any lands that we get, the BLM gets, that become BLM managed lands, they become ACEC, and they will be managed as an ACEC, and they'll just follow our, our ACEC regs. That's, and that's just what it is, which means that they're still open for public and everything. There's no changing that we have right now. Because my real goal is, see these people up here? Yeah. Okay. They've got a certain status with their property. In other words, you go to sell it, buy it, whatever. There's no disclosures. There's no issues. With this, you know, we don't know what the future holds with these designations. I mean, you can say all this now, but I've seen Mission Creek. I've seen that in a certain war. I won't mention any <coughs> uh, All kinds of other things where the government says we're only going to income tax. Uh, we've got all kinds of land disputes. You know, a neighbor brought up over in eastern Oregon. I can think of a big one down in Nevada that didn't go too well for you folks. Uh, you know, who needs all this? So people looking at this on your property value are saying, yeah, well, that's what they say, but gee, if I buy into this thing, then between them and them and whoever, if this is gone, you're no different from these people. And I resonate with the gentleman over there. I appreciate his comment. So absent something that's going to give us that kind of status. Right now we can say all these things. Five years from now, six years from now, who knows? That's the problem with right. any of this regulatory business and right. administrative state. Well, because you did some, say that this is what you're interested in right now, too. You did say yeah. those two words, right now, at the end of your sentence. So 
What does that mean for well, the public who's suspicious? So a couple things real quick. I want to uh, respond to what Bob's uh, good comments were, um, and then a couple things. This this um, boundary establishes um, no regulatory um, framework for any any lands within that, other than the federally administered public lands. That's and those have to adhere to our resource management plans. We have to go through a public process, and those plans are our contract with the public. So um, when when those are up for review. Um, then, then that's the opportunity that the public has to frame and shape um, the way those lands need to be managed. As far as inside and outside, the private lands within that or outside, it changes the land status, property status, um, absolutely zero. It changes it zero um, from, from this um, administrative boundary uh, designation. And then, I'm sorry, yeah. ma'am, you And not to be disrespectful. No, 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 I know what you're saying. And I, mean, I said you just can't help but wonder. Right. So these are the lands that we could be that we are interested in if they came back on the market. Right now they're not on the market, so we could compete for these lands. Um, uh, you know, maybe down here someone wanted to sell a piece of property next to the river or where the BLM property is. Those, <coughs> and if those were willing and those still met the values of the ACE, <coughs> they have to be values that we want for the ACEC, then maybe we would look to purchase them. That's, the, that's what I was saying. Okay. So I can't, I mean, I really couldn't say that what would happen 20 years from now, something unique might happen. That somebody might just want to sell us something that's unique. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so my question is, so if, if you're in partnership, why does your vision of the Wild and Scenic River, and then your proposal goes on to state that you would like to perhaps clean up the river and remove the sediments, and all this stuff was in your proposal. I don't understand if you're just identifying an area, why do you get so specific in your proposal? So the, in, in that proposal, it identifies the values that we would be helping to, to maintain, whether it's the river values and, and the things that, you know, uh, as the river's being managed now, that we want to help um, keep it the way it, it is, that people like the values that, that it currently provides for, for folks that are using the river in adjacent areas. So it's to, to describe the benefit that we believe we would have in maintaining that um, in, in that condition. So that river, so that imaginary line on the other side of the river from us would remain. It's not on this side of the river, so it is managing that river area. The, the boundary does include that river area, yeah. but, it, but so our it's management- It's not really an imaginary line. Well, we can't, we don't have any authority to manage the river. It's not within, yeah. Only no, the lands but, adjacent to it, but it falls under either state or, or, or local laws and not under federal law. But so under BLM also, laws, it's affected. But while well, it's scenic, and then it is, it does encompass, that line doesn't encompass that. So somebody help me on the wild and scenic. I'll have, we'll, it, it, if, it was, yeah, if it was designated wild and scenic river, I mean, BLM has very small parcels along there. So if we all we can do is recommend designation. We would not be managing that section of the river as a wild and scenic River, we would recommend potentially to the state of Oregon if they can or choose to manage as a wild scenic or have the capacity to do that, they would, or if not, they would not. So it would not be a BLM administered wild and scenic river. But that line would have to stay there because it is on the other side of the river, so it would encompass us regardless. Well, the wild, if it was established as a wild and scenic river, there's generally a quarter mile corridor on either side of the river. But that's a, yeah, that's a Separate process. That's a completely separate process from this, it's that, and that is not a BLM uh, decision in this instance. No, but it sounds like from your proposal that you're partnering with them. So we've been working with um, with the county and state parks um, on, a, on a river management plan because we do have those those parcels that are there, and our interest is in providing you know areas that might uh, be you know, conducive to public access. If, if that were to exist, you know, public access access is important along the road. So would you stay within the county parks for public access, or would you be after the homeowners that live along the river? Um, we are absolutely only interested in the management of the election along the Yes, sir. Well, as I see it right now, as a private landowner in that red area, if I go to sell my property, I'm going to have to disclose that we're a part of that, and it may impede a sale. Um, so this designation would, would not be considered an 
encumbrance on your property in any way, shape, or form. There's, there's, there's no reason other than if you felt like you needed to disclose it, any, any requirements that I would ever be aware of that would, would require that. I have to because if I didn't, they could sue me. Well, if it doesn't, if it doesn't bother anything, why don't you just change the line a little bit and let us out? Right, and that's what I'm hearing loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just ask which property owners want in and assume everyone else wants out? Why don't you ask, invite people to be in the ACEC and assume by default everyone else doesn't want to be in the ACEC? Have you thought about that? So that, that's a that's a good point. I guess um, you know this is this is again that opportunity for for us to to define who who might be interested in being within that boundary and, and until we know that. Um, this was the approach we took to provide you know, everybody an equal opportunity to, to look at what this proposal is and we'll come out with that range of alternatives that will then look at where we would have the folks that are most interested in having you know, areas within them. It just seems that more property owners want out than in, so why not just default out and invite people in? And, and the only reason I'm, I'm leaving that open for conversation is because I have heard from a lot of good feedback from I know, about 10, 12, Folks who've been very direct in that, and you know, we have, um, I don't know what our total count is here, about 30, 35 folks, and so I want to be able to be fair to others who want to, you know, also express that. Is there someone in here that wants that? Yeah. And I, I'm just going to ask is there anyone in the room that wants in that doesn't make it? I might. Okay, there, there is one. Okay. I think an awful lot depends on whether the BLM is able to acquire the Neary property and make that available for public use. Under that circumstance, I might. I'm just I'm trying to get a handle on the large, larger picture and eventualities. And I have to paint it kind of funny, but uh, let's say Nancy from the Nature Conservancy is driving down Highway 234. She looks over in the field and she sees Hank's cows out there and they're trampling the fairy shrimp. Under this designation, does she have the ability to call in and harass farmers in order to force them to a lower price or through eventual fines and litigation possibilities that can come out of that designation? Uh, absolutely not. not. Nothing that above and beyond would exist currently. And um, folks have no interest um, in, in, in doing it. Yes, sir. I guess what makes most of us, I think, probably uh, nervous is you draw a red line around us and then you throw the word um, um, environmentally sensitive on it. And how do you expect it to react? I mean, you just look at history, and if you say those words, it has nowhere to go, but, you know, way far from us. You want what we have is what we're hearing. And you want to take it a little at a time, quietly and slowly, like you know, it's all slowly. So I, I do want to make, I, I do want to direct that, uh, address that directly because I think um, it, I want to be very clear about this. I have no interest at all in, in um, pursuing any course of action that isn't in the, the, the public interest and in the interest of the Rogue Valley and only from willing sellers who, um, you know, would, who would be interested in um, helping us to maintain the table rocks, to maintain the table rocks in what we believe are our special places in, in the road At this moment, it's fine, but slow but surely as you acquire more, and there's less left that hasn't been acquired, and, because and you're not right there, or somebody else is in there, it's going to be brought into the yeah. scene. Mm -hmm. Think it's so bad. Right, right. Here. Right. Here. Right. Here. Right. Here. right, and that's, and that's your right. Because this whole thing is coming to the right? Yes, sir. So, what does it mean when you say public interest? We're out. In the public interest, so what I mean by that is an area, um, if there were, and I'm going to use a hypothetical situation, if there was a 40-acre isolated parcel um, that was uh, not uh, adjacent to any um, convenient areas for access for the public or, or places that people could use and enjoy, then that um, would qualify as not in the public interest because the folks can't either access it and the, and the public can't use it. Um, if It would be in the public interest if there are places that are easily accessible, if it meant device for recreation, for um, other types of public uses, then um, that 
is what I would consider, and is broadly considered as a, as a, as a public benefit. So you're making a decision what you consider to be public benefit. Which has to go through a public process, and so if, in fact, I, I were to pursue that first avenue, which is the isolated 40-acre piece, I still have to go to the public and explain why I think that's um, in the public interest, and folks can either agree or disagree with that determination. Well, and nobody's so. ever asked me anything. <laughs> I've never had anybody come and ask me anything. So again, that's that's where we use you know our current available, whether it's the, uh, our public meetings forum, we use you know, newspapers and contact local landers. That's why we're asking you now. Um, it's it's clear that you know you do have an interest, and we've been able to reach out to you, and you you've shown up and expressed that interest. So it's working now. Well, not quite, but <laughs> that's all right. I, you're here. I'm glad you're here. Did this make the federal registry? Yes. 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 And what are the actual dates that we have to respond with comments? Not the. <laughs> That's why you received the letter. It was in the federal register, and I think that since we're well, so the federal register just said we're starting the planning process, and that's what we're doing. There is no end date. So when we sent you our scoping letter, we said we're, this is the, we're starting the planning process and that's what we're doing. And in our scoping letter, we asked for your comments back. And I know that that's really hard to give comments when you really didn't, don't know what was, what was going on. But also part of that letter was, were you interested in a public meeting? And many of you called me and sent that form back. We have Michelle left. But we had many of those forms returned, and they said, yes, we want a public meeting. And that's what we're doing today, trying to help explain what we propose to do. Because this was our, just our initial proposal. So we're having the public meeting now. And now we're asking you to either tonight with our comment forms, or talking to us, we're keeping notes. Um, we, yeah, please email us, send us letters, and then we're getting your comments back. And then we're gonna take that, and we're gonna go forward. And, and start developing our, our, our EA for that, okay? What's the absolute chance to get this boundary changed? There's a chance. Would you like me now? Possibly, <laughs> but not as a partner. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can, you can, you can take it. <laughs> this guy says 25 years he's been working on this stuff. It took me close to 60 years to, to get up here. And now, and now you got me marked in a boundary someplace and I, I have no, no choice. I know where you are. I know where you are. You're good. I've got it, I've got it wired. Oh, man, I hope so. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, um, you know, I, I think I see the difference between your associates. See, I talk about principles. You're talking about specifics. You're totally missing the principles about what this is all about, about people having a determination in their property and what's around them in their county and giving authority to the government to do everything for them. I think this is a, that's what you guys don't find, kind of get. See, you're talking specifics. You're talking about dots on a page. You're talking about boundaries and little, little X's and O's. And we're supposed to understand that. No, people, common people, regular people, think in principle. And when they see you violating the principle, that's why they're not easy with any of this. And you see, that's where this is all wrong. And you, don't, you guys don't see that. So that's... That's the uh, that's something that the disconnect here. You know, I appreciate that feedback, and, and I hope um, there was nothing that anybody said tonight that would lead you to believe that, um, as as federal employees, that um, we hold as principles and values that, um, as as part of that, we are public servants. Okay, and and we, by the fact that we've reached out to everybody in this area, I think um, shows that commitment to what we, we feel like is a public trust. And, and so we do hold those in high value. Um, I know that's not always um, been viewed that way nationally, but um, that's those are core principles and values um, for me. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm one of your fence neighbors for about 800
100 yards. And if, you know, we got so much elk coming back across by the artillery range. So if elk knock the fences down and I don't get the fence fixed, well, I'm going to be held responsible for areas destroying your area of the next time. No, that's, that's not, there's nothing, that would be considered what, an act of, an act of elk. No, I mean, in, in those instances, if there's an opportunity, if, if you know you've got an issue you want to deal with, and, and you think, you know, you're interested in saying, okay, we'd like to help to actually travel over here to the fence design that we want to work together on to put them where we want to put them. Then, then that's something we, as a hypothetical situation, tell us about those us now, we'd be interested in something. Well, I mean, yeah, it's going to be being fenced in. You know, my other neighbor, mine goes through, his goes through back and forth. So we help each other out and round up and go back to the other side. So you go. So there's a time for a month. You have heard of their hopes and their dreams, and you figure it's a project which is going to help everybody in the future. It helps the county. Other questions, comments? Closing thoughts? So were the partners again involved? So our long-standing partners in this area, besides the Nature Conservancy, have been um, the, the Cow Creek Tribe, um, which can have that, that connection to this area from um, you know their, their, their past um, you know tribal uh, uh, you know, when they were habitated down here, and then the Confederate Tribes of Grand Ronde are the other are the other partners as well. We had uh, Jackson County has been a, has been a good uh, partner as well. Um, we 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 have a unique relationship with Jackson County. Where we do coordinate with them on our actions out here, so it's a little different, um, a little different level in state parks, uh, county parks. Well. Any okay. Well, if that wraps it up again, I, I do. I really do thank you for for being here, being very candid, and uh, and I know on a, on a Thursday night at seven o'clock, there are probably a lot of things you'd rather be doing, but. And by being here, uh, I do, do really appreciate it. So, thanks once again. Thank you. We're looking at, at the public input to provide different boundary um, configurations. Um, that's where we need input to say, you know, if we would like to have the boundary specifically um, here and maybe here, but everything else is not within that boundary. And, and that would be, you know, a publicly supported um, boundary that could help us. That if an important area became up for sale, that was in the public interest, then then that would allow us to do that, and it would alleviate the concerns of uh, adjacent landowners. Right, because I think uh, the majority of people that were against the whole idea about having a line drawn around them. I mean. That's jurisdiction, and people don't like to be opted into jurisdiction. So this is something new, and to sell this idea is going to be a tough sell. Uh, right, and that's where that's where we've probably done. We need to do a better job at this. Again, the jurisdiction only applies on the BLM, and but regardless of how many times we say that, the the concern and the perception is that it does have an influence on on private. And so if we can do something that that changes that, then. then that's in my interest to, to, to move forward so that we don't have that concern. You you say you, you might need to do a better job of doing it. I, you know, the sentiment I heard from the people is don't do it. Don't do a better job at it, but just don't do it. So, you know, again, it's the opt-in versus opt-out aspect. It's like invite people in and those who will be in want to be there rather than wondering who inside that boundary should have said something against it and didn't say something against it. Okay. Yeah.